yes. Oh, yeah. Um, my first guest is an actress, comedian, and uh, she had a Playboy layout I want to ask her about. I haven't seen her since I saw that. Uh, <laughs> please welcome Sandra Bernhardt. Baby. You're trying to look hard, but you know no, you ain't hard. No, no. I feel very vulnerable and very scared tonight. These are kind of yeah. fat. Well, yeah. I had to wear them so I could kick Barbara Bush's ass. Oh! Ah, uh, let's talk politics. <laughs> I, I don't know if you saw her on Larry King, but she she blew me away. No, I, I didn't I, see I, her. I'd never really seen her speak before, you me know? Yeah. I, she's just been kind of hiding behind, you know, the whole image of being like a, a nice lady. Mm hmm and then she comes out, and she's uh, just doing total rhetoric right out of George's mouth. Mm. And then they were talking about how she'd gone to um, oh, the Republican convention, and somebody ripped off her red ribbon, you know, which represents you know, AIDS awareness, as you know. And she says, well, sometimes she wears it, sometimes she doesn't. She gave a big attitude about it. I said, well, the woman should be sleeping with that red ribbon on, you know, first of all. And it's like, you know, her whole trip about AIDS babies. Yeah, it's, it's real cute to hold an AIDS baby. When has she shut up to an AIDS hospice? When have they made any kind of, like, public announcement of their support, you know, to, to AIDS research and who it's really affecting? Yeah. What did you think about Magic quitting the uh, board? I thought it was right on. And, you know, did George Bush even really acknowledge it with any kind of respect? I mean, a man like Magic Johnson isn't just going to drop out of it if there isn't a damn good reason, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. yeah. And he's just like, they go, I mean, he just goes on these campaign t tours and talks about what a great country this is. You know, God bless America. Did he show up during the riots here in L.A.? Did he give a damn about the inner city? Yeah. You know? I mean, it's like, it's... To me, it's like the twilight zone. It's like there are people, there, there are homeless people, there are people dying of AIDS, there are people having their rights taken away. And this man is like con convincing like the, the, the white middle class that everything is all right. I mean, are they living in a dream world or what? Yeah. Well. And you would just, I mean, you would just hope that a woman would have more compassion. You would hope that the wife would cut through all the ball and just say, hey, we really have to, you know, Get real, George. Yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's really blowing my mind, you know? Hasn't Barbara been able to soften him up on the abortion issue a little? I don't think so. She, she doesn't really say anything about it, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, like, it's, so, it's so weird. I was watching the, the marathon on A&E, you know? Mm -hmm. Mary Tyler Moore had, had all the reruns, you know, and as they remind me, I was in high school, you know, it was like 1972, and here was this like really independent great lady in a slim slack with a flare, living in her own apartment with Parsons tables, you know, handling every situation, a great job, and believe me, you can bet if Mary needed an abortion, she wouldn't have thought twice about it in 1972, and Lou would have been there to hold her hand. <laughs> And here we are 20 years later, and it's like, I mean, we're like, it's like prehistoric. How can they even, like, suggest that we have to go back to, to you know, to those really ridiculous, um, contrived times when women had no, you know, rights for, you know, to make their own decision? I mean, it's insane. Yeah. I'm furious. Yeah. Um, what do you think of Perot? Well, I, I think he's a little crazy. He is different. You know? I mean, I don't know. I think he, I think he kind of jumped in at the wrong time. Like, Maybe if he'd stayed in at the beginning. I don't know. Yeah. But this whole thing with his daughter in it, it, it uh, sounds a little, yeah. I, I, kinda, I got kind of caught up in it during the, uh, the debates with him a little bit because he was kind of exciting and, you know, he kind of threw a curveball into it. But then when he, the other day, he seemed like to kind of lose it a little bit, so I don't know. <laughs> Yeah. What's going on with him? Uh, you're definitely gonna vote, though, right? Yeah, I'm gonna vote, and I'm—I mean, I'm gonna vote for Clinton because yeah. we need a social change. Yeah. Um, I mean, I—I I, I hope that you know he can pull it off. I hope that you know he can really come through with some of the things he's talking about. But I think just on on the absolute basis of like people needing to feel that there is some alternative 
to this kind of right-wing fundamentalist reactionary you know society we're living in i think we need to vote for him do you think the uh the polls they seem to be narrowing and the guys know, are getting making me, that's close. why i wanted to say this i mean you know normally i don't get political you know and what, what do you think the reason for that is is it the character issue that's been brought up about clinton well i mean we've spent four years looking at a man completely lie to us right to our face like I meant, you know, like I just said about all these really, really essential issues. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, the, the financial thing, I mean, you know, I'm willing to, I'm, I'm in the upper, so are you. I'm mm -hmm. in the upper yeah. bracket. I'm willing to pay more taxes to bring better education, better health, and better social. I'm willing to do it. Yeah. And so should everybody who's in that category. So how much money do you need? How many fabulous things do you need in your life? I mean, you have to be willing to give to people, you know, the people who are less fortunate. Yeah, when Bill Clinton was here, he told me, he says, you know, I'm going to kill you when I get in, you know, I mean, because the 200,000... They're already killing us anyway. Yeah, but, you but, know? but he'll be killing us softly. And, and, and I, think, um, I, I think that's a better alternative that we help the masses. And um, I, think I, it's, I think it's our responsibility. Not everybody gets to be where we are. And I think we really have to give that back. Yeah. Yeah. We'll be right back with more Sandra Bernhardt. It was very, very funny to watch the news this morning, and there was a story called Hollywood Under Attack. And uh, Hollywood is being attacked, especially film, for moral choices. Right. Um, then I read notes about Roseanne and find out that you are going to leave Tom Arnold for Morgan Fairchild. They are well, going to flip out now. Well, Tom Arnold left me last year. Oh, my. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm coming out. <laughs> Yeah, and it's funny, I ran into Morgan Fairchild at the movies out in the valley, and she came over and said hi to me, and a few days later they had a casting for the part of uh, my lover on the show, and she called and she wanted, to, she wanted to play my lover. I was like all tripped out. So we taped the show a couple weeks ago, and we have curtain call afterwards, so we all run down, and I went to kiss her, like to trip her out, and she just turned her cheek like that, she got all freaked out. She couldn't, <laughs> she couldn't quite go the distance with so me. So it wasn't... <laughs> no, she's cool though, she's funny. She has, well, it's, really, it's very good. And That's have you cool. been getting responses on, on this uh, desire to act that out? I mean, because I, I, I would think they'd be trying to stop it from happening, you know? Oh, they can't stop. They can't stop Roseanne. You know that. Yeah. Roseanne has the power. And ABC, what have they said? I think they're totally into it. I mean, so the ratings are going to go through the roof. So this is, this is progress I mean, I mean pl sense, please. Right? I mean, it's like these fundamentalists, the, the, the Bay Buchanans, the Pat Buchanans, I mean, they're, they're all like, you know abuse children anyways that's why they're so screwed up you know and and my heart goes out to them it really does you know i think i think they're probably a family from incest or some kind of weird trip and um that's why they're so freaked out about the thing but i mean they, they they're living in a dream world if they don't think you know probably you know 70 to 80 percent of the population hasn't had at least one homosexual experience or hasn't fantasized about it on a regular basis i mean get real you know everybody's a little uh a little bi I've been fantasizing about you and Morgan Fairchild ever since I read the notes. You know? <laughs> no, I mean, we're going to... I tell you, if, if we have another four years of Bush, this country is going to explode, baby. It's going to be one funky, funky scene. Yeah. So they better get Clinton in there because, you know, they, people have got to start dealing with reality. It's very scary. I mean, I don't, I just, I don't know where this all like, got twisted and, and, and crazy, but it's just like, that's just the way it is. There's gays, there's homeless, there's, you know... There's racism, there's sexism, there's all the stuff that exists. Yeah. Um, can we talk about the Playboy layout? Because I sure. haven't seen you since it came out. It was very interesting. Uh, I even pulled one picture that I can show them. Yeah. Sandy? Really? Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. And you know... Swinging, swinging again. My favorite was the picture uh -huh. in the gold. Yeah. How did you great. do that? They um, sponged it on. Mm -hmm. Karen Kawahara, my makeup artist, is brilliant. She sponged it all over. Just, it's like, it's breathable. It's not like, you know, Goldfinger where they sprayed paint you and then you had to, like, leave a little spot in your back so you didn't suffocate. <laughs> um, <laughs> they have modern technology now. And it took about two days to get it all off in some spots. <laughs> like behind my ears. Yeah. 
Yeah. What do you think of Madonna's book, Sex? Oh, she has a new book out. I didn't know anything about that. <laughs> wow. It must be it must be very controversial and very edgy and very revolutionary. I'm sure. Yeah, it's uh, we you you got some pictures left from that from that monologue. Oh, that's yeah. okay. Yeah. Oh no, there's there's one. Yeah. Oh wow. That's the only one I can show you. Oh really? That's good. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen enough. <laughs> okay, back to politics. Uh... Yeah, please. Let's get into safer territory. Let's talk about the fundamentalists. Yeah, uh, how about Sinead? Yeah. I, I thought that was one of the coolest things she's ever done. Because in Northern Ireland, you know, there's a big problem. Mm -hmm. They've taken away, you know, all of women's rights and... You know, the church kind of controls the state there, so I think she had legitimate, you know, honest, first-hand experience, you know, with, with the church and, and, those, and, and that reaction to it. Mm -hmm. um, I thought it was very bold, you know? So you think if people here knew more about her country, yeah, they wouldn't be I, so angry I, at her? I think so, you know? It's the first time I've actually kind of respected her in a way. She's always kind of bugged me with her bald head and her insane kind of... <laughs> Gesticulation. I mean, I don't love her as a performer, and I think sometimes she she gets a little out of hand. But I I mean, I can't you know fight fight her for her you know for her experience. Yeah, uh, you always talk about old artists and the performers you love. What current do you like? What out there now do you listen to? Uh, music. Mm -hmm. Um, I haven't you know I haven't bought an album for a while. To tell you, I've been I've been traveling so much. I'm just trying to think of something off the top of my head that I really like. Because you like. Diana Ross and uh, yeah, well, I mean, I really like I like you know from from the really the thirties and forties on on up. Peggy so, Lee. Peggy Lee, yeah, she's Peggy's cool. Yeah. You know. And you and you don't listen to stuff now. I would think you'd be right on the cutting edge. Well, I am, but I'm just like I'm too tired to even turn the radio yeah. on. You know, I just want it quiet in my house. <laughs> you got to slow down. I'm a little yeah, I'm a little burnt out. Yeah. Just got back from Paris again. What's what's the latest fashion rage in Paris? Um, there really wasn't one. It was kind of I was in the Chanel show, mm -hmm. and it was all kind of diaphanous and you know, safe and sexy and cute. But I mean, there was like no major trend that I could pick up on. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's kind of the 70s, kind of the 60s, kind of the 80s. I don't know what the hell's going on. It's, yeah. it's a melange. <laughs> we <laughs> we got um we got some dates we got to talk about here yeah. somewhere. Let's see. Oh 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 oh. UCLA, right. October 29th, you'll Tomorrow be doing night. your one-woman show? No, no. Uh-oh. No, I'm not. USC, UCLA, they... Oh, come on, shut yeah. up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> who cares? They're putting money in my pocket. Be quiet. Well, bring me out to USC. Yeah, you'll go to USC. Match it, uh, match oh. it and raise it, and I'll come out there. <laughs> um, now, I'm doing a conscious, I'm doing a consciousness raising and rap session there tomorrow night, but I'm doing my one-woman show at the Paramount Theater in New York, November 21st. Yeah. So that's and it's called Giving, Giving Till, it, Till hurts. it Hurts. Yeah, it's a show I've been touring with off and on all year. Yeah. You did a song for us here once. Yeah, I did. Well, you want me to do another one with Public Enemy? <laughs> <laughs> That would be a duo. Are they ready for the, for a Jewish girl in 92? I don't know. I'll ask them when they come out. Okay. Well, that's why I came on the show, because, you know, I mean, Bush may be back, but I'm still trying my best, you know, to, to get us together. And get out and vote, and let's change it, because next, next time I come back here, I want some real family values, like the real American family. That like, includes all of us, okay? Yeah, like How my about single it? mom who raised yeah. me. Thank you. We'll be right back. This is Sandra Bernhardt. Love you.